Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We are out on the farm here in central Kentucky today and we are going to talk about some testing that we've got going on. Guys, you can see the corn in the back. Uh, you can see my corn slash Johnson grass, which is uh, not intended, um, but here in Kentucky, boy, aren't we just glad to have Johnson grass. I talk to a lot of folks around the country and they say, what's Johnson grass? I say, boy, I wish I could, I wish I didn't know either. Um, so this just got sprayed. Corn is starting to kick it in now and um, it's off and running. But today, guys, what we're gonna be talking about is this. Um, we're gonna be talking about some food plot stuff, testing that I've got going on on the farm. I did this for a reason. Um, and uh, I'm glad I get to do this, guys, so it helps you understand this and not make these mistakes. So I knew what was going to happen here, but I did it anyway because I knew it wasn't going to be a total wash and I can save it. But here's what we're talking about. We're out on the farm today, guys, in central Kentucky, and you can see my food plot right here backs up to the corn. And you're going to look at this, you're going to say, man, it's got a lot of grasses in it and stuff, right? And I'm about uh, a month, 30 days into my growing time period after I planted it. And uh, so corn, the food plot, and then my bedding right down in there. But this is what I did with this guys this year as a test as kind of an example. I'm always asked, okay, why don't we, why don't you just mow your food plots or why can't I just mow the rye out of, out of or off the top of my food plots instead of crimping? And here is why, right here. So we're doing some testing guys. I'm not against chemical, but I'm trying to, to really master the whole, um, the whole, uh, art of broadcasting, using, having successful food plots without big expensive um, machinery. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that what I've got here is this is that summer blend that, I, that I've got with John Comp. So what we did is, like I said, because I get these questions all the time, is I get these, you know, why can't we just mold them off from there? We don't want to buy a big, you know, $10,000 crimper. Well, first of all, um, you should never think that you should have to buy a $10,000 crimper. There's multiple, multiple options out there. There's ways to build a great crimper such as mine um, that you don't have to spend that. And I wouldn't spend that because I'm not a fan. I mean, I get it. It works. But I'm not a fan of the Chevron pattern on them crimpers anyway because they run too smooth. So to me, I want a, I want a crimper that is aggressive. So when I go to crimp my rye after I plant my summer blends, um, I don't want anything to walk away from it, so I don't have to possibly use as much chemical. I want, when I use my chemical, I want it to work. I don't want my ground and, and my plants to be immune to it, right? Um, so that's one side of it. So what we've done right here, guys, is to do this, is to, to prove this to you, as to why not to use the uh, mower versus the crimper, and can you use them together? So, so we what we do is we come in here and that rye is you know planted last fall and it's three four foot tall going into june this year i had to do a little early because i had so many i was on the road so much during may or, or or june when i usually plant i've got a just a break here that i'm home and i knew i wasn't gonna have the window and we had great weather so i elected to plant the end of may so with that being said um what I'm looking at here, guys, is we planted that summer blend in to that standing rye, right? Then what I do is I come in right after that and I crimp, using my crimper, I crimp that rye down on top of that um, that summer blend. That So here it's the whitetail driven summer south that I'm using and we have the whitetail driven summer north, depending on where you're at in the country. So actually, I don't know if you can see it. Deer just come running out in the plot while we're talking here. Um, so I actually crimp, use that a very aggressive crimper, that paddle crimper, if you will, down on top of it. Like I said, I did it early this year, but some of it starts to stand back up. If you don't hit it just right at the dough stage, that, that rye will start to stand back up. So some of it, because my crimper is aggressive, will not stand up if i can i guarantee you that if you do not do that if you own and you do spend that ten thousand dollars eight to ten thousand dollars on one of those big crimpers that, with that chevron pattern and and if your rye is not in the dough stage that the majority of that rye is going to stand back up 
that's why I use, like I said, I use the crimper because mine, some of it will stand back up, but probably 50% more than a chevron pattern. My, my flat uh, paddle bar crimper, um, a lot of it is, is scarred so bad. And yes, it jumps and pops and bounces behind the machine, but it's kind of figuring out the speed. I can get it to go away, um, the bounce to go away. So we crimp that and it starts to stand back up. So the question is, right, why can't we just mow it? Well, here's why. You can see the tracks right there, guys. I can walk you down here. And in every one of those tracks, went how a bush hog, and I used a 12 foot wide bat wing and it does this. So if, if you'd use anything less than that, it makes it worse. It doesn't disperse the rye evenly over that plot like we it does with a crimper. And as a, with a crimper, guys, we're not we're not mowing it, we're not cutting it off, we're crimping it, and every all of that onboard energy tries to keep coming back up, and it just keeps failing, failing, failing. Sooner or later, all that energy goes back in the ground, and it's that stored energy to use. And what happens is is the rye dies, so less chemical, right, that we have to use. When you mow it, what happens is is it gums up too much in certain areas. Then you you actually pack it with the tires of the of the tractor, and then what happens is it leaves these areas that are too thick with compacted thatch, and I can walk you down through there, and there's very little uh, plot uh, growing underneath that. Will it? Yes, and a good growing season, it will eventually push through it. But it's, it's not the even uh, disbursement. And when you mow it, guys, you're not killing it. You're just setting it back, and then the competition is still there. It's still strong with all your other plants when it's trying to grow. So that's what we did right here. I'm going to show you the difference. This is what we did right here. You can see how I would say, you know, more grass in here because I mowed it. Um, this one, I'm going to show you an example that I've got here. But I mowed this one. I didn't crimp it at all. I just mowed it. Um, bunch of bunch of bunch of clover my sorghum starting to rebound back there is some johnson grass in it but you know two weeks from now this stuff will be three foot tall and it'll look totally different now this one in the back that i was showing you here guys that's wrapped my screening is wrapped around this section from the screening right here all the way over to the uh, about 30 feet from the field or the wood line i'm sorry this in here this half acre food plot i actually crimped that one and then i mowed it so i crimped it and about a week later, I came back and I, I mowed it. I just clipped off anything that was standing um, that, the, that the crimper didn't kill. That one is about twice the food plot right now as this one. So the perfect thatch layer, like I always said, guys, you lay that rye down and it's real airy, right? You can see through it versus mowing that shuts it off completely. Will it open back up eventually? Yes, it does but it could be weeks and weeks and weeks before that happens. So perfect example, like I said, guys, I'm glad that I have a farm here that I can showcase this um, you know, with you. So the answer is this, can you, should you mow? I wouldn't mow first. You have to have a crimper with this process, guys. Um, $600, $500 or $600 is what I've got into that four footer. Um, it's a 22 inch drum sealed with uh, water bung in there that I can actually put more water in. I think the thing weighs, I can't remember what it is. It's 500 pounds or 600 pounds or something, right? It's it's just all that the ranger wants to pull. You know, I, I can pull more with it, but it's it, you know it's back there. So I've got a lot of weight and I've got a lot of aggressive paddles. They're just, it's, it's 3 16 bar stock across there. Four inch paddles, started with two inch paddles. Wasn't enough, it would actually fill up with dirt. I had to give it uh, round up with dirt, if you will. I gave it four inch pedals and I think they're six inches apart. And like I said, it works great for a crimper at the right speed. The faster you go actually works as a cultipacker. So when I'm running over that rye, guys, I'm not only I'm not only crimping it, I'm packing the seed into that ground. So you you can't get that with a mower. And a lot of times what you'll find, guys, is um, you know, like I said, this has come from experience, right? And I did this intentionally this year to show you is there's not near the seed germination in this plot that there is in the other one. And the reason for that is, is when you plant into this and then you just mow initially, you don't crimp or you don't uh, cultipack, I'm sorry, you don't cultipack or make that good seed to soil contact first. So some of the birds eat it. And then when you come to mow it, all of a sudden the mowers actually guys lift, they don't push down. 
what the goal is, right, is to is to plant that summer blend broadcast or drill. If you can afford to drill, the drill is the way to the drill is the way to do that. And the reason for that is, is when you run through that rye, you're you're knocking enough of it down, but you're slicing it right in that dirt, and boy, you're getting great seed to soil contact. Then you come over and crimp, and you've got the best of both worlds. But the reason that I'm so adamant about that crimper is because I'm broadcasting at that 20 to 30 percent more seed right than, it, than the drilling rate so like for example um, our drilling rate our, our seed rate on this summer south is like 48 pounds an acre you might as well say 50 pounds an acre and you know i'm, I'm planning it 20 to 30 percent more because i'm broadcasting because even when i crimp it and even if i cover it up the birds and the turkeys are still picking through it you're going to not get some that's germinating because you didn't get that perfect seed to soil contact but i get i'll, I'll get good seed to soil contact um because of the process that I that I use. So here's the example of mowing versus crimping. So can you do both? Yes, but crimp first. Make sure you crimp first, give it a week or so, then clip whatever does stand back up, clip it off. Or the perfect world to do, right, is to crimp, is to plant, crimp, spray with clethodim, then if there's anything left a week or two later then you can mow but most of the times you'll find find guys is you don't have to mow so the reason that a lot of folks mow is because boy it looks nice it cleans it up and uh, it just looks fit and finished right but as does disking a field there's nothing greater and more um you know more sense of achievement i guess you could say than looking behind you and smelling that fresh dirt when you're disking but little do we know for years and years and years we're actually doing ourselves harm um, by doing that on a big big spectrum not just like doing this with the screening you know where then we are ga gaining anything and that's what we get by mowing so um there's nothing it's not it's not horrible with the mowing because like i said you can see it right there that's full of clover so the clover loves the mowing early but all your other plants and everything that else we're trying to do um, when we're adding such of that unconsistent thatch layer we're not helping what we think we are so just what i wanted to touch base on here guys what i'm going to actually do with this was what this one is i'm just going to let this run this year and then when i when i plant my fall blend in i'll probably end up because the grasses are going to be pretty strong i'm going to plant my fall blends into it i'm probably going to crimp again which i don't crimp in the fall only crimp in the spring um crimp that down and then i'll probably hit it with clethodim to set that um you know johnson grass and whatever i'm going to kill a little bit of my summer summer food by doing that but i'm going to get this cleaned back up again and, and go at the summer or the fall blend real strong so just something i want to touch on guys can you mow yes it's just a timing issue and the goal is not to mow if you make sure that you're crimping first thanks guys